And we Welcome. are live here for game two. Oh, day. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so, uh, please, ow, please. You, you stepped on my foot. That hurts. I need that to walk with me. Please. But that's please. okay. It's okay. I have another foot that's well, well equipped for kicking and hopping. <laughs> we do have game two between Fnatic MSI Sen, who spawned in the north position as the lush red Zerg. And in the left position, we have Slayer's Boxer. He is blue. He is not the lower seated player. This is not MLG, but Slayer's Boxer, nonetheless, is going to have that nice, clean, refined blue shade. Beginning here on Terminus RE, perhaps the largest map ever created in any RTS week. Really? Mm, that big. Well, I guess Tall Dream Altar is bigger, but either way, this is a big map. <laughs> either way, it's one of them. So we saw Sen start off really strong in the last game versus Boxer. Don't forget, Boxer had the uh, had the proxy racks, and then he dropped it to the low ground. Uh, shot out a bunch of Marines. Quickly, quickly taken care of by Sen with literally no losses at all. Some damage done on the drones. This map a little bit different, and one thing that we didn't see too much out of Boxer in the last game was any sort of drop. The one drop that did try to go into Sen's base, it was quickly shot down by the few mutas that were out on the field. But now we've got uh, this situation where Boxer can drop over to this potential third, the weak, uh, the weak third, and uh, then, of course, the, the natural here, and uh, get some really, really quick action going on those drops. Wondering if that's going to come into play at all. Of course, Boxer, he's up to all sorts of craziness already. As he's like, I think I just want to put, you know, I want the property value of this barracks to be high, therefore right next to these minerals. And you know, I absolutely love this placement by Boxer, not just because it blocks his own ability to mine from the minerals, lol, <laughs> but in reality, the reason Boxer built it there, it's a forward extended barracks, it's in a very vulnerable location. If he built that at the front of his base, a, a, you know, a drone could easily pick off that scouting SCV. So by building the barracks tight to those minerals, we saw that the drone had a much harder time picking off the SCV that was building. And now that the Marine's out, look, Boxer's gonna scoot it back to the front again. It's those little tiny touches. A lot of Terran players just say, yep, the drone. It'll just kill off my building barracks. I couldn't possibly do a forward barracks. Boxer just forces it to happen by being so awesome. Yeah, uh, and uh, that was really nice, of course, uh, limiting the surface area. So I'm really excited to see the command center go down. Hatchery is down, about ready to complete here for Sen, and he is going to have a moment. Now, what's different about this game from the last is, of course, Sen's not going to have any initial pressure here. And if he does, it's going to come much later than it did last time. So instead of pumping out uh, six, eight, ten Zerglings, uh, he's going to have his six come out, his three pairs, put down his spine crawler, and uh, really just drone up. Yep, I absolutely love any sort of huge, huge macro play with that initial spine crawler on this map. I mean, uh, whoa, whoa, this isn't the version of Terminus where there's the backdoor rocks. Wait a minute. Oh, I even love the way that both these players are playing even more. For any of you who didn't know, there's been some recent changes in some of the Korean versions of this map where there is an entrance to that third rich gas expansion. But instead, on this one, this is just the easy three basey. And we're seeing Boxer go two racks, immediately throw down the orbital command and the double gas. There's the factory going down. Now, a real danger is that if you were up against Morrow, Morrow would 100% go for the huge Baneling bust. But right. uh, because, because Sen is, in fact, not Morrow, my powers of argument are amazing. We, uh, we may not see that. Sen generally favors getting the the, the, the higher layer tech up a little more uh, a little more early. And look at this boxer moving out. Ooh, Sen caught Ooh. a touch off guard. Hmm, it's going to be a little bit tough to do any sort of baneling bustage when you don't have any zerglings. We. Yeah, that's uh, going to be pretty much uh, out of the picture right now. We are. And you know, here's how you react. Okay, he, he took over the tower. That's a bummer. I'm going to make some more drones. So we're going to have one more Zergling go on out. And uh, we had eight drones, six drones. Speed has just started. So really just reading it, reading that pressure nicely as he sees Boxer extend himself. But he's going to move forward. He's going to check out the tech lab. There's that combat shield that you were talking about. Got a reactor going up on the other side. So Boxer just, uh, you know, maybe trying to scare his opponent, but uh, not really working out. Starport down for Boxer as well. And those drops will start to come into play. No creep connecting that third base quite yet. 
but the drone is going down there. Will he uh, quickly take the third? There it is, uh, four set. And, you know, again, I like this timing. He's going to get to the point where his economy is just so good. There's his lair going down. He's going to really be able to pump out some units. Also note the Overlord scouting. Does he have his third up? No good information to have. Oh, we were definitely watching Slayer's Boxer play because there are two Vikings getting produced at that starport. I was trying to do some sort of giant mind-bending exercise. Yeah, if he maybe gets the combat shield and goes for a fast drop, he'll have healthy Marines to wedge in. No, screw all that. We, he is going to kill Overlords. And look at the mini-map. We even see Sen. Oh, yeah. no, it doesn't even have Overlord speed, but it has an amazing Overlord spread. And these are going to wreak havoc and now... Now, finally, Boxer setting up the double medevac play, getting Barracks as three and four, and there, oh gosh, we, I used to rush for Vikings in the beta days just to kill Overlords off, and I stopped after Artosa smashed me when I did it, but it looks like Boxer bringing back that style clearly watched my play and said, I can refine that. <laughs> I, I can best Artosa himself, so I, mean, I believe very, it. very clever play for this map. Yeah, and it's scary. Just like you said, as a Zerg player, suddenly you're panicking. You're moving the overlords you have. It's it's taken away from your focus. You're making more overlords. But uh, against Sen, droning up, making more overlords, pr bringing his overlord speed on, getting the Spire. Boxer, I, I really like the Vikings. I think it's smart. He's going to take out another one here as uh, he's keeping uh, Sen like constantly uh, getting oh. even more overlord production. And it's the combat oh. shield drop. We the combat shield dropping going on right oh. now, and this is very, very clever. His opponent is unlikely to have a lot of units at this point in time. There are two Vaylins. He has to be very careful. There's no stamina. Oh, he loads up, but loses half the Marines. Boxers can't quite scoop the Marines into the appropriate position. So he says, oh, that's the appropriate position, and unloads again. He's going to be doing a little bit of up and down, loading and moving around action, but he has to be careful because we do see that there are more mutilists popping out, but look at the right side of the mini-map. We, we see that there's that Viking from Boxer has been doing some clearing out action, and man, just go to Fnatic Sen's view. He essentially only has Watchtower Vision and his main. Those Overlords are gone. Drops are going to be much, much stronger. Yeah, you are absolutely right. All the overlords pretty much inside the base. Mutas are out, and that is going to help his uh, cause a little bit. He's got quite a few. Uh, I see at least eight uh, at his disposal right now. Also going to put down some... Uh, well, that was just, just a spine crawler there. I thought he was going to maybe put down a spore crawler, but no. Uh, and again... Oh, my God. Uh, we got Metamax going across. Mutas are going to run into him, but he's going to be able to get the drop down. Will he take out... No, he won't. He won't. He almost did some serious damage, even if only one of those Medivax would have gone down. He's going to swing around once again in the back line. There is a missile turret. He's going to pick off one, two SCVs, but lose a Muta in the process. So poking away here, but how much damage can he actually do, Sean? Oh, I don't know. I don't know, El Doctor. We, he wants to do insane amounts of damage to something, maybe in a supply depot, maybe some kind of Medivac. And, you know, but, oh gosh. And if we again look at the right side of the map, Boxer. Woo! Getting the oh. lucky scout with those Vikings, spotting that fourth base from Sen, but more importantly, was doing harassment damage at the back of Sen's base. Wow, that whole Mutilus crisis was going on. That is what we mean by Boxer as an amazing defensive player. There was all that craziness going on in his base. Not only did he help keep it alive, but managed to use it as an opportunity to do a little bit more pressure. And I will say, of all nightmares to happen to the Zerg race, I would put number one as the medevac with one health left in the Terran base and you're like, I'm sacrificing every one of these mutilists just to kill that medevac. That medevac yeah. needs to die. And all the Marines are like, shh, that's the stuff. And you're like, please, please just kill it. And that is of course a very tragic moment for Sen, not killing the medevac and also spotting that bottom expo. Yeah, mutas are moving into the base and I don't think this is not good. There are lots of lings moving around, but we've got the Terran now. Moving in, Boxer is going to scan. There are a few Bailings coming out, but there are not a whole lot. They will get taken out by these Marines as they sit forward. All the Bailings Ooh. pretty much gone. More going in the back, too. Did manage to survive. The, the siege mode has gone down, and uh, here he goes for the attack. He's swinging on in. A lot of Zerg units, and the Bailings do not know. They do connect. Mutas trying to chase him down. Nom, nom, nom. Hungry, hungry Mutas gonna just rip through those weakened marines that one 
Baneling hit was all it took, and look at this boxer on the right side of the map, the Hero Vikings trying to do their paltry 12 damage a shot, but a dozen damage is not going to be enough for almost two dozen Mutalists. Going to rip them right on down, but of course, because this map is Terminus RE, we go to the base of Boxer, we see plenty of racks, three bases, and a bunch of turrets being thrown down in Boxer's main. He clearly is concerned about that enormous Mutalist count. He is definitely concerned as we have Thors being produced. Keep in mind, we have some uh, Zerglings down here from Sen, not only to make sure that uh, there's no uh, crazy exploiting going on, but also, you know, he can use those later on in any sort of attack, bringing uh, Zerglings in from the back. We see some Overlords spreading around the base to get some vision. Might even drop some creep on those three expansions. Mutilus are swinging around to the third. There are a lot of missile turrets here, but he does have good muta numbers. He's just going to go ahead and hit that refinery, which will do damage to the surrounding SCVs as well. Is he going to move in again? He's oh. Oh, got to watch out for that Thor in the back. I don't think he can quite see it yet. As uh, we check out the vision, Thor's going to get off a shot. Oh, and it oh! does do a lot of damage. And that is a whole bunch of orange and yellow mutas. And mm. Sen, again, bringing that refinery down to one life. That is his talent with Mutalus getting just to the edge and going, no, 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 I've had <laughs> enough. I just wanted to let him know I could have killed him. Problem within an inch of his life. <laughs> you see that there's that hatchery going down for Sen, a fifth base loving the big expand play from zerg you know a lot of zergs you know read an article by la lush where la lush was essentially saying that more than 75 drones more than just saturation on three bases can't really help for zerg to get four or five but that's just mineral wise zergies have been going gas crazy dude okay, there's two thors there's two thors they're in meta oh he dropped them he dropped them got some cute shots off on the mutas i'm sorry it looked like he was gonna oh. go for a drop but not only was it scouted now uh but he damn near took it out and it looks like boxer is gonna counterattack. Do you see now the medevacs trying to swing their way back over? Look at that amazing tacticianry. Oh, I love that oh. play. He is trying to find himself a good opportunity to be aggressive, but the Thors, because they're slow, no big deal. Just gonna use the medevacs. I mean, Boxer just getting an amazing position, but look at Sen as units on all sides. Yeah, you know, he doesn't have Baneling speed, and I think that if Sen had speed, this would be like a no-brainer, like an easy battle. He's going to go ahead and move in. Banelings are coming in slow and steady. They, too, take out the front Marines. Lings and Mutas coming in from the back, but the Mutas have to move back the moment all the Lings are gone. And again, think about how much different that battle would have been with Baneling speed. We do have some Infestors out, but here comes Boxer's army yet again. A lot of Banelings are in danger. Muta's in danger as well. That Thor is almost dead, but he can't just sacrifice his Muta's to go in there and get it. There's still a lot of Marines, and uh, Boxer is starting to uh, break the reinforcement line here as well. Has to be very, very careful, though. I mean, there's a lot of Zerg units getting a regroup. Sen has a ton up at the top of his base, a lot of hatcheries. He has more units swinging around the backside, and Fester in that group as well, trying to swing in. Boxer stimming Marines to try to join with the huge blob, but will another counter attack possibly bring the end to Boxer in the main? Boxer's having to be very, very careful. Now unloading some units into the main. Oh, a bailing hit in the main just cleans that little counter attack drop. Man, Boxer still having some amazing positioning in the center, but it's kind of a stale position for Boxer. We, I don't actually know if he can really move much farther forward. Yeah, I don't think he can right now. I mean, again, he's cutting off the reinforcements. There is a small army that is moving out from Boxer, and uh, it does take Sen uh, by surprise just a little bit. Bailings will move forward, and I do think he'll go ahead and get rid of this. Now, this could be nasty if Boxer can really cripple the production. Uh, all that's going to be left is basically what is up there, and I do think that Sen could make an army from both sides of the map that he actually possesses right now. So we are going to see some Marines break off and uh, try to take out some of those other bases, knowing that there's some shenanigans going on. A lot of Zerglings, a lot of Banelings in the natural. But again, these Mutas now taking out factories, taking out the front line. There are a lot of Marines there, but still so many Mutas. So uh, the production is getting hit, and now Marines moving into this fifth. Oh, but so many Zerglings from Sen wrap right around those marines and give them a friendly zerg hug but of course it's not quite compatible we see more units swinging from slayer's box or another medevac thor very very cool play oh. helps increase the mobilities that is the new terran reaver and there it is oh huge hit 
from the fours, but look at this Ergling count wrapping around everything. Oh my goodness, look at that macro from Sen. Incredible numbers of units. Boxer, no amount of micro can help you defeat 50,000 Bane Links. We Lord of the Links indeed. Sen just rolling on in, trying to siege out a lot of Marines, spreading out. Bane Links trying to roll in. Good control by Boxer, but there are way, way too many Zerglings. Doesn't even oh. matter. Oh, ow, we, oh, oh, good game. GG. Holy crap, good freaking wow. game. I'm clapping with you. You Do know, you it, see that snapback? They and, and not only that, but there were, I mean, think about it. They were from Sens Natural. He had probably, let's say, 20 Banelings. By the time he got to the front of Boxer's base, he still had like seven Banelings. Like the control was actually phenomenal. Really letting the Zerglings go in, take all the damage, d deal uh, with all the units, and then controlling the Banelings independently, picking off all those small uh, little sets of Marines in there. Phenomenal control by Sen. And uh, again, really like pushing the limit there. Did a great job with his Mutas. Um, you know, I think you really deserve that win. I mean, there's always an idea that I call momentum wheat. It's where you convince everyone who's watching that you were always just about to lose. You know, I'm going to lose. Oh, no, I didn't lose. But I'm about to. Oh, dodging the loss. Oh, maybe a little bit longer. And then suddenly you go, wait a minute. I have five bases and like 100 drones. Actually, in the drone counting station, let me actually just take a look at that. 78 drones, and in addition to that, was almost at 3-3 three, three upgrades for the Lings. Had four hatcheries blasting <laughs> out insane amounts of units. And we saw Sen hold on and hold on and hold on. And then, with a wild swing of momentum, Deflam just blasted him down with giant pair of Zerg brass knuckles right in his tear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really showing again that swarmy style of play uh, of the uh, of the Zerg in StarCraft Two, just very, very nicely executed. Um, you know, and and again, like Boxer, once he sort of got crippled a little bit, kept on like standing back up, like you know, in those like movies where guys are fighting and he just keeps on getting up and getting up. Uh, unfortunately, just finally KO'd in the end. And, uh, you know, Sen, I think you talked a little bit about momentum. Good momentum going into the next map, which is going to be on Metalopolis. And I, I feel like I can almost completely ignore some of the earlier comments made about Boxer Day when we sit here and go, he's 2-9 versus Zerg. And I, and I mean, yes, I'm going to make this comment even after Sen winning because even in that game, um, you know, there were some very good plays by Boxer. So I, the next, the, the next games are just, they're, they're going to be great. I know it. It's it's kind of insane to think that we are going into game three, and this is a best of five. We're tied one one. It's like we just get to see a best of three all over again. It's like, all right, well, I got you know, I got my stretches done. I did my shoulder circles before the match, and now I'm yeah. ready to step up my game. I've been watching the Karate Kid for three days, and with I'm ready to do kick. this. Yeah, with the Danny, crane kick, except Danny except Larusso, honestly, you know. Oh. I've got bad news, Day. I've got bad news. The last time I made a Karate Kid reference uh, during a TL Open, like uh, several people in um, in, in, a, in a Team Liquid thread were, were a little upset because they just didn't get it. They don't know the greatness that is Danny LaRusso. And it just it makes wow. me sad a little bit. Yeah. All they know is Will Smith's kid. Yeah, yeah I, was about I, to I say, know like, Ralph I Macchio, baby. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know Will Smith's kid's name. He's just Will Smith's kid was the guy, you know, in the movie. And honestly, I, I just wanna I wanna throw it out there, we if we are doing the karate kid comparison, then Sen is not only the guy who breaks your leg in the semifinals and gets disqualified, but he'll just step up on the ring in the finals and break your other leg. That's right. Put him in a body bag! Yeah! <laughs> Oh, All those guys so that have never because, seen that movie, they're like, oh, oh this is stupid. You, you got to know Sen to know why that's so amazing. Because Sen is, it like, he, he he's the, the sort of person that you describe as a sweetheart. That one man to another man, he is just a little <laughs> sweetie pie. And I mean, he's a ferocious, fearsome killer in the game. But, like, he when he shakes hands, it's such, like, a gentle, 
fragile handshake. It's like brushing your arm against a spider web. It's barely there. He's just so, he's just such a sweetheart. And the idea of him, oh, put him in a body bag. <laughs> Uh, well, with that being said, uh, should we should we move along to, to game three, sir? Yeah, and then I'll get my laughing out in the break. But you do the intro. I'm muting my microphone. All right, guys, don't go away because when we come back, PokerStrategy.com, TSL3, round of 16 continues. It's Slayer's Boxer versus Fanatics. Then we are tied one game apiece going on to game number three.